Samsung released the Tab S7 FE or Fan Edition with the goal of providing the most popular features from the more expensive models at a lower price. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about the one major mistake that Samsung made with this tablet. At first glance, you may not really notice a difference between the two. The FE offers the same size display, similar build quality, a large battery, and an included S Pen. But there are some critical differences that you need to know before you spend your money. When we look at size, the two are virtually identical. And while the Tab S7 FE is 0.03 inches or half a millimeter thicker and 33 grams or 0.07 pounds heavier, these aren't really meaningful differences in terms of actual use or portability. Both tablets give you a nice and large display to work with. They're fantastic for viewing content, for surfing the web, great when working with productivity apps because of the large amount of real estate, and they give you a large canvas when using the S Pen. But the displays aren't the same, they're not even close, and we'll get to the differences in just a minute. From a design standpoint, Samsung didn't skip with the FE. We're getting machined aluminum bodies with both. We're getting rounded corners, squared off edges, and small bezels. I was really happy to see that Samsung included a micro SD card slot with both tablets, and this way we can add up to a one terabyte card for expanded internal storage. Now looking around the edges, both tablets have a power button, volume controls, and a USB-C port, but we see two speaker grills on the Tab S7 FE, versus four on the S7 Plus. And that does result in the Tab S7 Plus audio sounding fuller and richer. Moving on to the display, we're seeing what might be the most important difference. Both tablets offer a 12.4 inch screen, but the Tab S7 FE has a TFT display, which looks good, but it's not in the same class as the Tab S7 Plus Super AMOLED display. The image on the Tab S7 Plus looks like it pops right out of the screen, it's bright, it's crisp, and it looks better when you're viewing it off axis. We're also getting a higher resolution display at 1752 by 2800 versus 1600 by 2560, more pixels per inch with 266 versus 243, and the Tab S7 Plus also has 120 hertz refresh rate, so UI animations will look smoother on it, and the S Pen may feel more responsive than it does on the Tab S7 an FE 60 hertz display. One other advantage for the Tab S7 Plus is that the display has support for HDR10 Plus. And that's really nice as more and more HDR content becomes available. But while the display on the Plus is better than the one on the FE, that's not the biggest issue when making a decision. Now before we get to that, let's talk about biometric authentication, because here we see another advantage for the Tab S7 Plus, which offers both face recognition and an in-display fingerprint sensor. The Tab S7 FE only offers face recognition. Personally, I like having both options. There are times when face detection hasn't worked well for me, and the fingerprint sensor has been practically flawless. When it comes to the camera and speakers, again, everything tilts in favor of the Tab S7 Plus. The the FE has an 8 megapixel rear facing wide camera versus the Plus that has a 13 megapixel wide camera, a 5 megapixel ultra wide, and a flash. So, not only are we getting a higher resolution wide camera, we're also getting this ultra wide camera for when we want to capture more of the scene or if we're working with a really tight space. Now, moving on to the front facing camera, the FE has a 5 megapixel camera versus an eight megapixel one on the Plus. So essentially, any way that you wanna look at it, the Plus has a more advanced and versatile camera system. But you should ask yourself if you actually plan on using the cameras on your tablets. Personally, I always reach for my phone, so this isn't a major deal breaker for me when I'm choosing, but it may be for you. Now looking at the audio system, the Plus has a four speaker system versus the FE with only two. And this is one of those areas where the FE actually sounds pretty good until you hear the plus, which does sound fuller, richer, and warmer. Now, when looking at accessories, I was expecting the keyboards and the S Pens to be the same on both of these tablets, and I was wrong about both of them. First of all, we're getting a basic S Pen with the Fan Edition versus the Bluetooth-enabled one with the Plus. As far as writing and drawing, I haven't really noticed a difference, but none of the remote functions and gestures work with the basic pen. When we look at the keyboard, Samsung created a dedicated book cover keyboard for the FE, which has a different design it doesn't come with a trackpad, and it stores the pen in the fold. The one for the Plus does come with a trackpad. You can separate the back from the keyboard, and since the pen stores and charges on the back, 
you can take it with you and then use and store it without taking the actual keyboard. So you can just keep the back of the device. The good thing is that if you want those features, you can actually use the book cover keyboard that's made for the S7 Plus with the FE, which is what I do. Now, if you're looking at using this type of setup, you may also be interested in DeX, which lets you use both of these tablets as laptop replacements by offering a desktop-like UI operating system user interface. We're getting a taskbar at the bottom, a desktop with icons, the ability to multitask by having windows snap to half the screen. We can have floating windows, and we can also attach an external display and get a dual display setup. Now, if you wanna take this to the next level, pair an external keyboard, a mouse, and then enjoy the improved ergonomics. If you have a compatible laptop like the Book Pro 360, you can actually use both tablets as wireless second displays. Getting everything connected takes a few seconds and you now have a portable wireless dual monitor setup running Windows. With all of these added functions, you may be thinking about processing power. So let me quickly give you some benchmark scores and then we'll talk about actual real life use. This is an area where you would expect a Tab S7 Plus with its Snapdragon 865 Plus to come out ahead of the FE750G, and indeed it does. For single core performance, we're looking at 933 versus 646 on the FE, and for multi-core performance, we're looking at 2831 versus 1896. In both cases, the Plus outperforms the FE by about 50%. We're also getting more RAM on the S7 Plus when we compare the base models, but I'll talk about that more when I get to the configuration and recommendation section. Now, even with all of those differences, for almost everything that I did, which is viewing content, surfing the web, using productivity apps, and then editing photos and taking notes, I could barely tell the difference. Like maybe the S7 Plus was slightly more responsive, but it wasn't a major difference. Now, one area where I did notice it was gaming. Both tablets were able to run all the games that I played. Both worked great with Xbox Game Pass and an Xbox controller, but the Tab S7 Plus user experience was better. The display looked better, the gameplay was smoother, and I didn't get any type of lag like I sometimes got with the Tab S7 FE. It was rare that it happened, even with the FE for the games that I played, but I don't ever remember it happening with the Tab S7 Plus. One thing that I wanted to point out, and I also mentioned it in the detailed fan edition review, is that the Wi-Fi version of the Tab S7 FE comes with a different and more powerful processor, the Snapdragon 778G, versus the 750G on the 5G model. So I'll do a follow-up video about the differences once mine arrives. Now, with all this productivity and gaming, you should be curious about the battery life. I have to give props to Samsung here for giving us the same 10,090 milliamp per hour battery on the FE that they gave us with the Plus. I had very similar battery life results with both, and I was getting somewhere between 10 and 14 hours, which I think is pretty good. When we look at connectivity, both tablets offer 5G and Wi-Fi models, but the Tab S7 FE is compatible with Wi-Fi 5, and the Plus is also compatible with Wi-Fi 6. So it has potentially faster Wi-Fi capabilities depending on your setup. Now that we talked about the differences, let's talk about the configuration options, pricing, and then the mistake that I think Samsung made. Brand new on the Samsung website, the Wi-Fi Tab S7 FE is available with 64 gigs of storage and four gigs of RAM for 530 bucks, 128 and six for 600 bucks, and then 256 gigs of internal storage and eight gigs of RAM for 680 bucks. There's also a 64 gig version of the 5G model for 670 bucks. Now the Tab S7 Plus starts at 850 bucks for 128 gigabytes and six gigs of RAM, 929 for 256 and eight, and then $1,030 for 512 and eight. The problem when comparing these two tablets, at least in the US, isn't with where they're priced on the Samsung website. The problem is that the S7 Plus is available even as renewed for very close to what the FE sells for new. So it's an issue of timing. I think it should have come out closer to the release of the S7 Plus and the S7 if possible. At this point, so much time has passed that I think a lot of potential buyers are going to consider used or renewed devices that are same generation, they offer superior features, 
and they're only marginally more expensive. In my opinion, with what's available in the US, I think it could be a better value, but I'm curious to know what you think. Remember that I have links in the description to all the products I talked about. Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe and then watch this video comparing the Tab S7 FE to the iPad Air 4. You know what I always say? Buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.